It is time for the Berkshire Edge on air. The BerkshireEdge.com, of course, uh, is uh, online. Uh, they are there updating news stories every single day. And we get to speak to them once a week. And we just touch upon some of the uh, uh, some of the stories that are in the BerkshireEdge.com. And with both Marcy and David. And we say good morning. Good morning, well, well, good Marcy. Good morning. You know, I, by the way, the, bre- you, the Breakfast Club reminds me of Don McNeil's Breakfast Club. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes, I remember that. When I, remember. When, uh, when I was a kid, we, I used to listen to that. And I could remember, Good Morning Breakfast Clubbers. That's he had right. a little I, song that he sang. And you, well, you were so asked are to, you gonna, what I want to know is, what is your song? That you our song sing? is Robin Hood, Robin Hood, and oh. his band of friends. But you see, Don McNeil... Every, once a show, they asked you to get up and sing the song and march around the table. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, right. They did. <laughs> You'll never guess who else listened. <laughs> That's right. You. No. Marshall. Uh, I, well, I was a radio addict from... That's, from that's how well, he was. So I, I remember I, listening to that show in the hospital when I when I'd had my appendix out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just seemed like you were having your appendix out. No, I mean, not, not I know. while. It was, I know, you know, no, no, no. Uh, the, it was I was recuperating as a kid. Right. Well, let's go on to what uh, people, okay. uh, some of the stories that are, we're highlighting today for the BerkshireEdge.com. Uh, number one, U.S. Representative Joe Kennedy III was in Pittsfield announcing his campaign yeah. to seek the U.S. Senate nomination. Well, this is very interesting. I mean, we're going to have a very uh, yeah. um, contentious race here for Senate um, with, you know, Joe Kennedy. I mean, he's he, you know, he's uh, an impressive young man, and he's certainly got the name behind him. So he's, uh, he doesn't have to worry about name recognition in Massachusetts or probably anywhere in the country. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, and- uh, this is a, an edge cast. He, we, uh, ben Hillman, our videographer, was there at, at, the, at uh, an announcement where Kennedy was in um, Pittsfield announcing his intent to challenge uh, fellow Democrat uh, uh, Ed Markey in the um, the sitting Senate senator uh, in the in the uh, primary so this is these are Democrats uh, this is these are feuding Democrats you might say well they are Democrats so what doing what Democrats do best eat their own <laughs> that's right yeah <laughs> Well, but that's just the Democratic Party uh, nationwide. Actually, I, you know, I don't know enough about the, the about the race, uh, but it almost seems like to me once again it's it seems like there's two different wings of the party that that, that are really at, at one another. Perhaps, but it's uh, you know a younger generation. Yeah. Ed Markey has been, you know, in a congressman for many years, and um, uh, his first term, the first term as senator. senator, and I think <clears throat> Joe Kennedy is. Joe Kennedy the third, it turns out, is uh, you know seeing, uh, calculating that now he has to make his move now um, to uh, go into a more national prominence. So, yeah, no, um, the, yeah. Marcy is not all that popular in the state, so he's vulnerable. And there's yeah. also an interesting um, element to it because, as Marcy pointed out, you know, it's it's one thing if you have no historical name recognition, but right. you come out as a Kennedy the third, you know, it's yeah. uh, it's it's a little different than just coming out as uh, Joe Blow, if you will. Yeah, well, there were two other Joe Blows that already came out to uh, to challenge Markey, but they're going to fall by the wayside in the face of uh, you Joe think? Kennedy the third. Yeah, um, so they have no recognition compared to him. But as I say, this is a an edge cast. Um, and it's a video, uh, a well done video by Ben Hillman. So uh, you get a chance to uh, to get a little taste of what Joe Kennedy is like. Um, he's he's quite impressive, actually. Um, and. Uh, well, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. <laughs> well, this next story, and, I, and you can explain more to me, uh, and Great Barrington, the select board, has rejected the advice of the uh, Link Mansfield Task Force. They voted to keep the Lake Mansfield Road open and one way. The road is, uh, is on the banks of the uh, lake, and the roadbed is falling into the lake. Are there yeah. plans Are there plans to fix that? Or, or yes, the, is that's it, the point. They're yeah. going to... 
fix it, but they're going to make it one way rather. That, that's what their their the select board is suggesting. Uh, it, it, it's uh, a very popular spot, but it, it, access to it is uh, been uh, compromised by the fact that the, the the little access road, at least from one side, uh, from the south side, has been it's, it goes right along the banks of the river, and it's I mean of the of the lake, and it's falling into the lake, <laughs> and. Uh, so that they need to repair that road, but they, they're going to make it a little narrower um, and and repave it. But they're going to make it one way, which is uh, uh, comp- which in the circumstances of uh, of Great Barrington right now, there, there are a number of bridges that are out. Uh, so getting around uh, in Great Barrington and out of Great Barrington is is a little bit more complicated than it used to be um, well, correct me if i'm wrong but yeah. yeah by making it one lane uh sooner or later they're going to have to sooner or later they're going to have to do it over again because uh the erosion won't stop well i'm not yeah uh, um i think they're going to have to shore up that road yeah. that road somehow um but uh it's not for the it, it you know the access to that lake and it's Little recreation area and beach is you. You can get to it from the south side, from the south side of the lake, or from the from the north side. And the north side is a two lane road to, that um, there is going to remain a two lane road. It's, they're only talking about the 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 uh, the road that goes from the south side of the lake uh, from the hill area, uh, what they call the hill. <clears throat> area of Great Barrington to to the um, to the to the recreation area. So it's it's um, it's not an entirely uh, one way uh, one way the whole from, from the, both sides. There's other ways in and out. There, there's yeah, not there just are, the and yeah. it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but it's probably going to preserve the lake a little bit by doing it this way. All right. But the, but the uh, bigger story, and I'm, I, I don't, I was distracted from it, so I don't know if David said that. But you know, we have two bridges out in Great Barrington. Um, one, uh, I mean, you know, we're we're seeing the uh, the the failure of so much of our infrastructure. All these bridges were built about the same time, and they're all failing at about the same time. But um, we have two important bridges out in Great Barrington. Over, over the Housatonic River. Over the Housatonic River. And uh, so people are searching around for alternate routes to get where they have to go because they're major, you know, they are, they are major bridges and they, they close off major routes. So now, um, although the, the committee had recommended closing Lake Mansfield Road, if we close it now... It's cutting off yet another important uh, thoroughfare for you know for getting around town and getting in and out of town now that the bridges are closed. <clears throat> so those bridges were still open when the committee made that recommendation, and uh, I think what the select board did was realize that you know if they did it now, if they closed it now, it would be yeah. e- even more of a bottleneck and even more difficult for for people in town to get around. Now, there are some people, of course, who don't want it closed because there's going to be more traffic in their neighborhood, um, and that's a little self-serving. Um, but, you know, for the rest of us, it would be a major inconvenience to have yet another important route shut down. So well, I think that's what the uh, the select board was trying to balance. But, but I think that, you know, the more important issue is how are we going to maintain this infrastructure? I mean, all of us towns, you know, the towns in Connecticut and the towns in Massachusetts, we have, we have failing infrastructure and not enough money. Yeah, it, uh, Sharon years ago faced uh, all the town roads were in very, very bad shape. Right. Uh, very, and uh, just, just bit the bullet, got some state funding, but then uh, created a big project where they spent um, – I think it was close to seven million dollars wow. on doing over. Uh, I think it was about sixty-five to seventy percent of the the roads, the ones that were in really horrible shape, and then moving on from there. 
uh, yeah, the infrastructure, once it's left to crumble, uh, it becomes even more expensive uh, to fix and to plan uh, and to plan how to fix it. That's that's uh, it's, and that's something I think that all communities are facing now, especially in the Northeast. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Now let's go on to the uh, Berkshire school districts uh, because uh, this also is something that applies to people here in Connecticut and uh, who listen in New York, and that is declining enrollment. Uh, what do you do uh, to, to to combat that? And you've got two South Berkshire school districts seriously uh, talking about merging now. Yeah, it, it, this was an, it, uh, really inevitable. The uh, Southern Berkshire Regional School District, which is borders Connecticut, uh, has had the most uh, serious decline in the number in the enrollment of students, and uh, they have a high school uh, complex in Sheffield, along with an elementary school and a middle school, and there are just not enough students to uh, for which that facility was built. And so they're inevitably they're they're looking to uh, to find some cost-effective way to maintain you know education for these kids, and they're just going to have to merge with the Berkshire Hills Re- Regional School Di- District, which is just north in Great Barrington. And it's a it's a, you know school district committees have resisted formally engaging in talks on this because. People are loyal to their independent, to their school districts, but it's going to have to happen somehow because uh, it's going to it's not going to be without its uh, uh, difficulties because uh, students are going to have to be bused a little bit more, a little distance. Yeah, I think and, that's um, one of the big objections. Yeah, for I mean, parents, it's a sprawling know. district here. Yeah. So. Uh, We'll see how the. In any case, they're just beginning to really formally uh, talk about this kind of merger, and uh, which is, it, as I say, it's, it was inevitable. They had to do it. All right, uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, this is. I think if there weren't such a thing as marijuana sales in Great Barrington bringing in money, that horse racing would have had a chance to come back to Great Barrington. But I think. Uh, Great Barrington is pretty much set against bring, bringing horse racing back to the fairgrounds. <clears throat> well, there's certainly a lot of vocal people against it. Well, that, that's true. You know, it, it, I can remember the horse horse racing when it was uh, in the taking place in the uh, in the fairgrounds um, a number of years ago, and um, you know, this is a this is not one of the the elite tracks like Saratoga, for example. These are uh, you know tracks where you know the horses are are not your top tier thoroughbred racing horses, um, and so it's it's a little bit of a it's a little sketchy. Um, but the fairgrounds has uh, you know is <clears throat> it's been really sort of dormant and. Um, this is a way of uh, some of the there's a track Suffolk Downs in in uh, the eastern part of the state that is uh, thinking that maybe they could ex- you know expand their season and uh, horse racing offerings by uh, at least having a, a, an abbreviated uh, racing season at uh, at, Great at Great Barrington, reviving it. But uh, uh, it's going to and the controversy is that the at the state level it requires some enabling legislation, and um, they've apparently it's been proposed. And apparently, the state can override the, yeah. the local permits. So, yeah. <clears throat> so there's a feeling of frustration that uh, um, you know that that at the local community doesn't have any say over whether or not this happens. Right. I mean, I. Think you know, the, most of the objections to the uh, to the horse racing have, has really been compassion for the horses. Um, there, there is a little issue of whether it would increase traffic, but um, you know, it's proposed to take place in October when most of the summer the summer traffic is gone, um, and it's unlikely, to, you know, to be any worse than the summer traffic. So. I think that that's not the ma- the major objection, but the major objection is people are concerned that this is cruel to horses. 
<clears throat> well, it th- it's well founded. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know some some of these horses are, uh, uh, you know, are actually lame, and so what they do is they give them a shot of but- what's called butazolidin, which it, uh, which allows the horse to run because they can't feel the pain in their hoofs. You know that that that's the whole thing. What what yeah. people don't realize is that. Uh, the the seedy part of horse racing and and the, the bad part of horse racing are the twenty five to thirty percent of the trainers that do yep. that. Um, what people don't realize is that these horses, whether they're run on small tracks or large track, the thoroughbred horses, uh, it's in their lineage. That's what the, that's what they they're that's run. what they're born to do. Yeah, uh, it's like people that watch the the horses pull the carriages around New York. It, it's it's what they're born and what they're bred to do. Now. How the people that own them and run them treat them is where the concern should come in. Well, uh, and, and, and you know the horses that are raced at Saratoga or Belmont or any of the uh, first-rate tracks, you know they're they're treated pretty well because uh, you know they're they're not only were they expensive, but uh, you know they're they're valuable. At a track like Saratoga, I mean, like uh, fair, uh, the fairgrounds here in Great Barrington, that's a, those those horses are not those elite horses. But still, uh, the problem is actually that you start they start running the horses at two years old, and at two years old, the bones and uh, in a horse's hoofs and uh, legs are not yet fully formed. They should not. You shouldn't even ride a horse until they're three years old, at least. For most good trainers, whether they're small trainers or not, the good yep. trainers will take their two-year-olds and uh, train them for one full year. Train them yeah. d- uh, and build them up so when they're three-year-olds, mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're ready to race. They're in great form. And uh, either they are excellent horses and move up into the big races or yep. they don't. But that's 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 the normal accepted procedure. But once again, uh, there are slimy business owners in every business, and it, it's no different in horse racing. And uh, that's what, and it involves an animal, and that's what really arouses the public interest. Yep, that's uh, upset. true. Well, we'll move on from horse racing uh, to uh, uh, 16 immigrants uh, were granted citizenship uh, at the Norman Rockwell <laughs> Museum. Oh, yep, yeah. it was a wonderful ceremony. It was really heartwarming. I mean, there at the gallery at the Norman Rockwell Museum, it was it was packed with their friends and relatives and supporters of people and the, and the their teachers from the uh, wonderful literacy network of South Berkshire, which is uh, takes the teaches these uh, immigrants uh, uh, English if they need it and. Uh, provides them with guidance and classes in uh, becoming U.S. citizens, and it was just so heartwarming. It was—I can't tell you—it was—it was really, uh, you, know, you know what? And in the in the um, uh, current atmosphere, where you have this thug for a president who hates, who's who's uh, you know, you know, just promoting this kind of racism against. Um, Immigrants, immigrants uh, and people of color. It's just, it was, it was such a contrast to that, you know. In fact, I mean, David was there and, and reported to me that in the in the ceremony, I mean, there was. Uh, if you look at our podcast, we had, David recorded the uh, the giving of the judge uh, who oversaw the ceremony and the giving of the oath. And the judge was really wonderful, welcoming immigrants and talking about how we're all immigrants. And uh, um, and then after the oath is uh, is administered, we don't have on the podcast, but the ceremony includes a tape, a welcome from President Trump, <laughs> and apparently, you know, the there was silence in the audience uh, and it's no deafening. applause at the end of that, and you know that. Um, the tape seemed so jarring and out of place, and the men and, his, and a lie. <laughs> and, and his message also was: now you can all conform to be how we are. Um, now that you're lucky enough to be in the United States, so it, I mean, it wasn't even uh, you know a, a sincere welcome, even. 
so it was kind of harsh. So I, I didn't realize that they would do, that that would be part of the ceremony. But it is <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is. I mean, I've never been there, but it is. And with this president, it's particularly upsetting. All right, what's up? We only have about a, about two minutes left, yeah. and we want to get on okay, to the. David is going to walk uh, out now because he has to take his son to school. So I'll finish up on this. Uh, yeah. um, the student led uh, the student strike. the student led so climate had, strike. You know, we had a very big turnout for this student led climate strike, but it got out of hand in Great Barrington, and uh, and you know, and we are upset that it's set. You know that it may have turned some people against the uh, student efforts. Uh, apparently, there were a few students who, you know, the, the student the uh, the demonstration was uh, welcomed on the uh, the lawn the library lawn in Great Barrington, which is right downtown, um, and there was a very big turnout. The you know the public schools uh, um, bust kids, uh, and nobody was. Uh, Nobody was penalized for missing school. Um, all the private schools also allowed kids to take the day off and come to this. So it was, there was a great deal of community support, but there were three students who decided that uh, just uh, showing up wasn't enough. And they started, um, they wanted, they said, this isn't, this uh, march or this demonstration isn't going to mean anything unless we take it to the streets and unless we take the streets. So they went into the streets, um, stopped all traffic. Traffic was backed up on either side of Great Barrington for miles. Um, and as somebody in a letter pointed out, spewing exhaust out of their cars while the students held them up, you know, in, in the name of climate, uh, climate change. Um, so it was a very, un unfortunately, it was an unpleasant day. There were three students who were arrested. Um, it left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. The cops came and tried, you know, to politely ask the students to get back onto the streets, uh, you know, off the street and back onto the lawn, but they didn't. Um, uh, so, so we have a report on that, but we also have a... A very interesting letter from a 17-year-old girl who uh, who wrote in afterward and said that she was so sorry that members of her generation had uh, had done this, uh, um, you know, because climate change is so important. And instead of being negative and contentious, there were so many uh, um, ways in which her generation could begin to contribute to. Uh, a movement to stop climate change, and she laid out, you know, four or five things like recycling and, you know, and a number of different things. That, and her letter got tremendous response. I mean, there were a number of people, including a former school teacher in England. I'm not sure why she's reading the Berkshire Edge unless she thinks we're in Berkshire, England. But, but she wrote a very beautiful and thoughtful letter about you know how important it is for youth to get involved. So um, you know, in the long run, I think it will be a lesson to everybody. But it was a, an unpleasant day, and it you know, and it should have been a peaceful demonstration, and it, it would have been much more impressive had it just been peaceful. Um, a, a big turnout to show that kids were really concerned. All right. Well, those um, stories and many, many more. Uh, yes. But theberkshireedge.com, theberkshireedge.com. And we'll speak to you next week. Yes. All Thank right. you very much. Have Thank a good you. week. Take care. Bye. Uh, that is the Berkshire Edge uh, on air on Robin Hood Radio.